Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go. First story. They say you can't put a price on happiness, but it cost me a few thousands and it was worth every penny. My late husband was in a car accident his senior year in 1986 and got a settlement of 30k he could access at 18. He was a gearhead and wanted to buy a Corvette, but his mom did not like that idea, so she made him a deal. If he bought the car, he would have to pay rent and storage for his other cars, or he could buy property and stay home rent-free as long as he wanted. So at 18, we started looking at property and he bought 10 acres for $5,000. We intended to build there at some point or sell it later on. In the early years, we would have massive ragers and there was no one around to bother and it was great. Eventually, people bought and built on the lots around us and zoning laws changed to allow one house per acre, so there were several houses, but it was still rural and a few of us had large empty acreage the kids would use to ride their dirt bike. We did not care. Let them have fun. About 15 years ago, another new house went in and it was right on the property line. They hadn't even finished construction on the house when the wife began calling to demand I take some trees down because they blocked her view. The funny thing was the view they blocked was from the RV they were living in. Once they moved into the house, they wouldn't even be near those trees. So I said sorry but no, I am not cutting those trees. And she was not happy. And over the next couple of years, she called to complain about all sorts of stupid things. And the noise of the kids on dirt bikes. Hell, she even got mad at people riding their horses because they made her dogs bark. One spring day, I drive out there and notice that the stream that ran across my property and theirs had been dammed on mine. And diverted on my land about 50 yards from their property line which sent it along the dirt road that went down a hill and up the other side, creating a pond where it was blocked in, another at the bottom of the road, and preventing me from accessing the majority of the property. Now I knew it was their doing because a previous fall slash winter, she had called to complain my stream was causing her property to flood. First off, it wasn't my stream, and her property did not really flood. In winter months, the stream naturally got larger, it flowed downhill, and it kept to its banks for decades. Their lot was originally heavily wooded, and they had cleared all of the trees. And I could tell they had done a bunch of grading, so if they had water issues, that's their doing, not mine. Anyway, I went home and the following weekend we grabbed a small backhoe and Cowell friends to unplug the stream. We hadn't even unloaded it before we heard her screaming and the cops showed up. They were unsure if they should stop us because our state is pretty environmentally conscious and there are strict wetland laws. The cops did not know if we were rerouting the stream or if they had. I completely understand where they are coming from and I knew this could happen so not only did I bring pictures to show how the stream had been, but one of our friends was an official at the DEO and he was able to explain the law and that we legally needed to put the stream back. We couldn't do much about the pond, except wait for it to dry out. But we sent the stream back down to its original channel and of course, when it went to their freshly graded land, it had no channel to flow and yes, it flooded their yard. Unfortunately for them, there happened to be that DEO official who felt it was his duty to issue them a citation for diverging and illegally altering the stream. They ended up having to put the stream bed back 
Henry vegetate with native plants and shrubs in a 25-foot buffer zone, which took away a portion of their yard, paid us damages, and got a huge fine. As the spring and summer progress, the kids on dirt bikes discover the pond. By this time, it's around 8 to 18 inches deep and they are loving riding through it. So instead of just riding through there, they spend hours in that area much to the annoyance of the neighbor. She calls the police multiple times, but the kids would either be gone or say they have permission to be there. So the police call us and we say yep, let them ride. Now we did have concerns about liability if they got hurt, but we liked pissing her off so we took the risk. Not the best idea and thank god no one ever did that we knew about. A couple years go by and she has learned to text because we ignored her calls when she had something to complain about. I make my annual spring visit and notice there are 23 large cedar and fir trees cut down. Five have been cut up and a path leads directly to their very full woodshed. I was pissed. This isn't something I can just fix in. You don't screw with my trees. I called the police and their excuse was that firewood was their sole source of heat and they needed the wood. They cut so much so it would dry out over the next couple years. They got another trespassing order. The stream one had expired and charged with theft and vandalism. It took a couple of years but they ended up having to pay me $10,000 for each tree they cut down. So that was nice. Plus we sold 15 of the trees and made another 45 k and they were pissed to say the least. Life goes on and we still get text messages every time she hears a dirt bike, horse goes by or whatever irritates her on any given day. We started having summer camp out parties over the next few years and she always called the cops for fire department. Of course, we never got cited because we are not stupid and did not break any laws. Sadly, my husband died suddenly and eventually I decided it was time to sell because I wasn't going to build a house there so I listed the property for $1 million, which was the market rate at the time. Remember, it was like 10 acres and you can build one house per acre. Of course, anytime people went out there, she would flag them down and tell them it flooded and all sort of nonsense. She doesn't want anyone to build or be there. I should have renewed the second trespass order, but it expired right around the time my husband passed and it just wasn't important at that moment. Developers were not bothered and we did get a few offers under ask I was happy with but I really wanted to sell it to an individual who wanted to build a single home. Just being stupid and sentimental. My agent wasn't happy but understood. One day he called me with an offer that was much less than any of the others and they wanted to do an owner carried contract for 3 years with a balloon payment to pay me off at the end of the 3 years. There was a couple who wanted to meet me out there. I didn't have anything going on the upcoming Saturday. So I said I would meet them with the understanding that I really wasn't interested in carrying the contract and the price was too low. We figured they were hoping to change my mind and we were hoping they would come in with a better offer. They got there before me and when I arrived, the witch was there telling them how bad the property is. I parked on the main road and was walking in so none of them even knew I was there. As I approached, two little kids come flying up on dirt bikes. She comes unglued, grabbed a rock and threw at them. It came nowhere close to hitting them. The guy immediately starts yelling at her and tells her to get out of there. It scares her and she leaves. He sees me and begins to apologize but I stopped that and thanked them. We started talking and he explained that part of the reason they wanted this specific property was because they had two young boys who rode motocross bikes and he loved the trails. Plus he wanted to build a track for them. When he showed me where I knew he was my buyer. I took the loss on the sale and carried the contract just despite that which, while that is a huge sum, 
Remember we paid 5k for it and got almost $300 for the trees and another 20 for the nonsense with the stream plus enjoyed the property for almost 30 years and I got the interest on the contract and the balloon payment. So it wasn't like we really lost out. Plus, knowing the witch was going to be miserable for years to come, you just can't put a price on that. I sold it six years ago, and I still go out a couple times a year just to check it out. They have built a beautiful house at the farthest point from the witch, and there is a huge drag cup by her place. She still sends me nasty texts and I should probably block her butt. It makes me smile each time knowing that she is still pissed. Well, worse the loss. And I know my late husband would approve. He always knew I was a pity witch. Next story. Entitled person gets herself exposed to COVID. So quick note. In most hospitals, if you have tested positive for COVID, there is a procedure the hospital enacts. It varies by hospital, but generally speaking, the standard procedure is to isolate the confirmed COVID patients and handle them first, barring some major traumas. I was diagnosed and confirmed, so the story begins with me arriving at the hospital ER. At the time, I'd experienced some trouble breathing, shortness of press, lots of fluid in the lungs, and basically everything was not too good. That's probably putting it mildly, I suppose. But the point stands. I quickly get ushered into the isolation area, completely skipping the line of people waiting as COVID patients, regardless of status, are considered critical. I am laying on my bed in isolation, waiting for the doctor to see me, when I notice a screech of some kind of wild animal. That animal being an entitled person. I didn't catch all what she was saying, but got the impression that she was, in her mind, more important than me. How dare they take an obviously, to her, healthy person back first? No amount of talking and whatnot on the part of the nurses will stop her ranting and raving. Eventually, they must have told her to take a number and wait to be called, because the screeching largely subsided. Around this time, the doctor sees me and gives me some kind of breathing treatment to help with the problem, so I'm still coughing. We're supposed to keep masks on at all times, but it's kinda hard to do when every 5 minutes or so, it feels like you're coughing up a lung. Even so, I've managed to relax somewhat, camping out there and letting the drunks do their work, and generally just dozing. And that's when I'm rather rudely awakened by the oxygen mask I'm wearing being snatched from my face, and this inaudible screech of cursing and spittle flying at me. The lady has somehow breached the isolation area and is now screaming in my face about how she is more important and how dare I, a mere pleb for something go first. She needs to be seen first. And do I even know who she is? Between her screeching at me and my pressing the nurse call button, it takes maybe a minute for doctors in the bunny suits, full hazardous response gear, to respond. They work to pull the lady off me, but not in time to prevent me from going into one of my coffin fits. She's screaming incoherently at this point, and things only escalate from there. Security gets involved and ultimately she does get what she wants. Scene. Granted, she ended up being restrained to the bed, and it took a doctor practically yelling at her that she was now exposed to COVID. This did not sit well with her. She started blubbering and crying that she was now going to die, and it was all my fault. That didn't fly long though. The crocodile tears drying up pretty quickly while the doctor informed her, in no uncertain terms, they had video of her preaching the isolation room, and that she had taken it upon herself to approach a patient without any formal protection. I ended up having to stay overnight, and she got to enjoy the test, or they stick a swab all the way into your sinus cavity for testing, and a night at the hospital while the test came back. I have to wonder in all honesty if it was worth it. I mean, she'd come there for something minor, and now she gets to suffer with the rest of us blips who caught the virus. 
I'm in the isolation period now. It was maybe a week to go before I'm clear. And sadly, ended up with some permanent lung damage from my own ordeal. And a story of someone whose own entitlement got her in some really hot water. Next story. Entitled mother thinks she's entitled to my debit card. Background. I, 17 male, had just gotten a debit card. I had begged my dad for one for a while and finally got one on my birthday. I work part-time at a food chain inn, put all the money I earn into it. I'm always careful with it and make sure it's with me whenever I'm out. My dad gave me the card so I can see how I can use it and if I'll use it wisely. Sort of like a test to see if I can be responsible with money later on in life. Keep in mind my family is not particularly rich. We're stable but we do not consider ourselves really prominent. I use the money I get to buy for things that I like to buy to ease some of the financial pressure that is on post my work appearance. I use it for things like games for my PC, gifts and treats I get for myself whenever I go out. And I've been saving up for a PS5. The incident. I was hanging out with my friends at the mall. We were walking, talking and walking around stores. Suddenly, one of my friends, we will call her Jay, started feeling dizzy and unwell. She would get nauseous if she walked too much without rest. My two other friends sat her down and calmed her while I rushed to a nearby supermarket to get her water and some aspirin. Most supermarkets sell that. I don't know what the situation is in the States. I got the items and quickly scanned the registers to find them all occupied. At the end of the row of the registers, though, there was a self-checkout lane that was practically empty. I run towards the machine, scan my items and take out my debit card to pay. As I bag my items, I try to wiggle the card into my back pocket. I had obviously failed then. It fell. While was the place being loud and me trying to be quick, I hadn't noticed that my card had fallen. I run out to meet up with my friends and make sure Jay is alright. And that's when I realized my card wasn't with me. I quickly scanned around the bench we were sitting at and confirmed that I had probably dropped it at the self-checkout. I race back to the checkout area and I see only one person there, introducing the entitled mother. She was scanning a few very pricey items, caviar, sparkling water, premium shampoo and so on. I approach her to ask her about my card when I see that she's holding it in her hands. I politely tap her shoulder and ask her for my card. She turns and gives me an expression that I can only hope people of her kind can make. She waves a thing in front of me and says, Back up kid, that's mine. Why would a child like you even have this? I'm a very standard 6'1 male with a baby face, so it was easy to assume I was still going through puberty. Ma'am, the card is mine. Please give it back. This woman was now ignoring me. I was reaching her hand towards a scanning machine to pay for her things. I glanced at the screen with her list of items, and I'm horrified to see the order amount of the equivalent of $200. My card had one of those chips that allows you to simply place the card on the sensor to pay without having to physically swipe the card. I quickly put my hand over the sensor and told her to hand it over. I did not scream it, but said it sternly enough for it to appear like a threat. What happens next still makes me cringe to this day. The entitled mother fig falls on the ground, starts cowering behind her arms and yells, THIEF! Thief! He wanted to rob me! He hit me to steal from me! Help! This immediately catches the attention of everyone in the registers beside us, introducing my savior, a nice security guard. He approaches us and tries to understand what is going on. He approaches a woman at first to see what happened, where she sputters slurs and racist remarks at me. A Middle Eastern and where I live, and some locals have very unique views on us. The officer I later learned was also Middle Eastern. He helped her up and turning to me, asked me in Arabic, our native tongue, what happened. This took both me and the entitled mother by surprise since this guy was as white as vanilla. 
I explain everything in Arabic to the nice guy, with the entitled mother being ignored as she mumbles and growls. After hearing what I had to say, he ordered us both to come into the back rooms so he could check the tapes. We're both taken by other security guards into the security main office and wait. After about 5 minutes of awkward silent waiting with the entitled mother, the nice security guard comes back and demands my card back from the entitled mother. The entitled mother then bursts into a bowl of sob and tears. I'm a single mom. I need the money. And she gives this whole charade. I'm there watching while I die inside from the amount of discomfort I'm in. On one hand, I know this woman is lying and just looking for an excuse to steal from a minor. But on the other hand, she a 40-something woman that probably has kids. Instead of being responsible and owning up to her actions, she's playing victim and throwing a tantrum like a baby. Security confiscated the card, and after confirming that it was mine, it had my name on it and I had my ID on me, they led both of us separately and I met back up with my friends and told them what happened. As I'm telling the story, I catch the entitled mother in the corner of my eye being dragged by police officers, with what looks like her husband and teenage daughter at her side. I look back up and give her the bird, and she notices but before she could do anything, her husband looks towards me and gives me an apologetic look. Single mom my A. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.